Hello, everybody. My name is Ludger Pries. I am a sociologist at the Ruhr University in Bochum and hold a chair on sociology of migration, organizations, and participation. And I'm very happy to welcome all of you to this first lecture series or the first session of our lecture series that we organize in a very short attempt and endeavor with the other seven universities of the unique research network. I'm very happy to also welcome many of my colleagues from the other universities. I very much uh, appreciate their endeavor and their effort to make this lecture series possible on the topic of migration and corona. And I would like to begin my presentation, which is prepared as a PowerPoint. And uh, please put off, if possible, your microphone and your video so that the quality of the uh, transmission could be better. So let's begin with the sharing of the PowerPoint right now. I hope you can see now the PowerPoint. I welcome all of you to the first lecture series in this unique, unique network course that we opened uh, just a few weeks ago on the topic of migration and corona. And this is a lecture series of the unique network. The unique network is a network of European universities. You see here the uh, logos of all eight um, integrated universities, Erasmus Rotterdam, Koch University in Istanbul, Rupp University at Bochum, Koch uh, College in Ireland, Deusto University in um, uh, Bilbao, Spain, Oulu University in Finland, and we have the University of Zagreb and the University of Liège in Belgium, Zagreb, obviously Croatia. So this is the unique network, eight universities based in post-industrial cities aiming at transforming their modes of teaching, of research, and of learning by sharing their efforts to innovate this basic element of the transition that all these eight cities are uh, living and experiencing like right now. A basic principle also is to include mm, uh, as uh, most as possible the local population and so many social groups and uh, as possible in these learning activities. So I think this is a good opportunity because the topic migration and corona is uh, in every corner of all our societies and communities at this moment. And in a very short period of time, we prepared uh, a program that is running from today up to 15th of July. And here on the left-hand side, you see uh, the topics of and the uh, presenters of all our course sessions from now on every Wednesday at beginning at 10 without uh, the German CT. So it's 10 ST. And at the, in parallel to these lecture series, we organized and opened at Rupp University in Bochum a lecture, um, um, a master course, uh, including uh, student work groups dealing with and researching specific aspects of this topic of migration and corona. Uh, questions like how and why is corona impacting on informal and formal migrant work in my city or in our cities of the eight universities? How and why are images of migration and migrants changing due to corona in public discourse in my country and my city? We know that the corona has some impact on how immigrants, how refugees are seen and how politics and politicians are dealing with this topic. Another question could be how and why is the spread of corona 
related to international mobility of which kind of persons. So on the one hand side, for instance, we have qualified expatriates and managers, politicians, artists, but on the other hand, we also have uh, informal migrants, uh, precarious migrants, seasonal workers, etc., that are uh, who are um, affected in a different way. Another question could be how and why is Corona affecting directly and indirectly the situation and destiny of refugees and other forced migrants? These will be some of the questions uh, that are dealt in our lectures, but also in this parallel student master course where we will go on after my lecture uh, in a minute. The results of such work groups or, and group work could be discussed online and in video meetings. And I already put the uh, unique website here where we have a first announcement. And later on, we will see that we, uh, the opened classroom in LinkR, a software program that uh, helps us to organize our joint uh, teaching and learning activities. Now, if we come to the topic of today's uh, lesson, my topic will be migration, corona, and transmittances. In a minute, I will explain why I think that the aspect of transmittances and remittances is crucial and important for dealing with our topic of migration and corona. We will have some sessions <coughs> where topics like uh, seasonal work, refugees, etc., are in the main focus. Today, I will give a broader overview. And the basic messages of my topic, uh, of my talk will be, first, international migration is of increasing global relevance. Second, besides economic remittances that are often discussed in the context of migration, and that will change a lot and be infected by Corona. Besides economic remittances, there are a lot of other impacts of international migration in the countries of arrival, but also in the countries of origin. And this is uh, the uh, argument I will make uh, in the second step in the sense of uh, moving from a concept of economic remittances to societal transmittances. And the third, third step will be to deal in a more uh, detailed way with Corona and how it influences and how it is influenced by migration. So let's begin with the first point, the global relevance of international migration. In this slide you see the international migrants at mid uh, year 2019 and we can uh, interpret this as a huge amount of the stock of 272 million international migrants defined as persons who changed their country of usual residence. And we see that this stock of international migrants is mainly concentrated in Asia, Europe, and North America. And uh, minor uh, dimensions we find in Latin America, uh, in Africa, and Oceania. Uh, although uh, considering the overall population, for instance, of Australia, the almost 9 million uh, international migrants are quite a considerable amount. Now it is interesting to uh, underline that since 2015, the growth of international migration is higher than that of the world population. The world population of about 7.6 billion uh, people at, uh, in uh, 2019, the world population so is growing a little bit slower than international migration. This underlines the very dynamics of international migration at our moment. 
And this has to do with, obviously, with uh, Corona. This second slide uh, shows uh, in a more detailed way, without being able to explain all the details of this very nice uh, graph, it explains the international movement. When we had a closer look at the stocks of international migrations in the slide before, this slide reflects the uh, stock, uh, the, uh, sorry, the movement of international migrants uh, by uh, taking into account a five-year period, which is uh, quite exceptional. Normally, we check this on the basis of uh, annual uh, flows between countries. This is a five-year period, and we see the bilateral flows of migrants defined as those changing their country of residence. Uh, between the top, only the top 50 sending and receiving countries in this five-year period. During this five-year period, some 40 million migrants in the total, out of the total of uh, 196 countries uh, shifted uh, their country of residence. And what we see, and this is important for ongoing, uh, our ongoing considerations on uh, Corona, uh, what we see is the highly networking and networked of international migration all over the world, but also the regional uh, focuses of this. If you take, for instance, Germany, uh, this is uh, Germany as an example, it's a very low level of international migration movement during this five-year period from 2005 to 2010. It's only and this is the number here, 1.2 million people who either left Germany or entered Germany. Those leaving Germany are those where the, uh, the gap between uh, this uh, 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 column and uh, this line is very short. And these are uh, people entering Germany during this period from 2005 to 2010. We see that not all the uh, migration movement is explained by only taking into account the 50 more uh, most important countries. This is because uh, many people from other than the 50 most important sending and receiving countries worldwide are important for explaining the migration dynamics between Germany and other countries. But we also see, take the case of Mexico, the very high concentration of migration movements from Mexico to the United States of America. This is explaining the uh, almost 95% of all Mexicans leaving the country of the 2 million during this period go to the United States of America. And we can, we'll come back to this uh, afterwards, because it has a lot to do with remittances and the impact, the possible impact of uh, the corona crisis on migration. Interesting also the high concentration of migration from India and Bangladesh uh, to the West Asian receiving rich countries of the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, Qatar, etc., and uh, also the high concentration of regional migration in the former Soviet Union that you can see here. So I think this graph, even if it's quite uh, difficult for you uh, to share all the details, we will upload the PowerPoint afterwards so they, that you will have the opportunity uh, to read it uh, more carefully. But it, I think it shows the, the direct relevance uh, of international migration and the spread of pandemics like uh, corona crisis. Now, let's come to the second point, the international migration that we just uh, had a, a small uh, insight right now, and the uh, element and aspects of remittances and transmittances. If we take the traditional view on economic remittances, then we have to admit, and it's very interesting to see, that the overall development of re economic remittances, this is money sent from uh, 
workers and employees from a country other than their country of uh, citizenship and normal or former residents sending to their countries of citizenship and uh, or country of their former and usual residents. If we take this, we see an enormous uh, growth of remittances payments all over the world up to an amount of almost 500 billion uh, dollars, US dollars, 500 billion US dollars. And we see that remittances payments at this moment in 2019 were higher, much, much higher than the uh, official development aid that countries pay for the poorer countries of the global south. And it is also much higher than the portfolio debt and equity, equity flows. It is even higher, the remittances payments, than foreign direct investments of big companies. So if we speak of remittances, we are speaking of the most important, at this moment, the most important economic flow at the global level. If we take uh, China out of this calculates, then we see that even since 2015, the remittances payments are higher than the foreign direct investments. This reflects a little bit that much of the foreign direct investments during the last five years were focused on uh, China. Now, what does this mean for the countries of origin where uh, people come, international migrants come from and where remittances are sent to? Here we see uh, the numbers of remittances inflows only for the European or for some uh, selected European and Central Asian countries. If we take in, for instance, the worldwide level, we can, I can uh, tell you that uh, in uh, India, only in India, uh, we have some 79 billion US uh, dollars inflow. In China, we have 67 billion US dollars inflow of remittances. And in Mexico, the third most important country, we have 36 million billion uh, US dollars inflow of remittances. And the next country or the most important country in Europe is Ukraine with 14.5 uh, billion uh, US dollars as remittances to this country. And you see uh, the Eastern European countries are crucial as receptors of economic remittances. At the same time, at this slide, uh, you see the percentage of gross domestic product uh, uh, that uh, economic remittances uh, represent. And we see there are countries like Kyrgyz Republic or Tajikistan where uh, the uh, remittances payments re represent um, a third of the gross domestic product. Just to reflect, in Germany, the automobile industry, which is considered to be much of the most important industrial in, uh, sectors in Germany, represents just one to two percent of the German gross domestic product. So we see the huge amount and significance of economic remittances for many countries. Now, my main argument now to shift from the concept of economic remittances to societal transmittances is to argue that we all often reduce our um, focus to money transfers and to a one-way flow from the countries where international migrants are working to the countries where they come from and where um, economic remittances are received. I think this is a short uh, view because uh, the impacts of international migration are not related only to economic aspects, but also to political, cultural, social aspects. And they are not only focused on the countries of origin, but also on the countries of arrival. And we have to, we have to take this into account if we try to estimate the impact of corona on international migration. This is my argument. So let's see in a very short way some of these aspects of 
why we should broaden and wider our concept of remittances towards a concept of societal transmittances. In an economic dimension, societal transmittances not only refer to the flow of money, material goods, values, properties to the countries of arrival, but also to, uh, uh, sorry, to the countries of origin, but also to the countries, for instance, of arrival. Uh, examples for this are uh, for the economic remittances to the countries of origin. Uh, is the money sent regularly? This, we saw this before in the graphs of the World, World Bank. But also it's, uh, let's say, the cars people bring with uh, when they come back to their countries of origin, tool machinery, construction material, new technologies that uh, migrants apply in the country of origin, but also in the country of arrival where they come in. So economic transfers are not only from the country uh, in, to the country of origin, from the country of uh, arrival, but also from the country to, uh, of origin to the country of arrival. Think of the investments of international migrants opening restaurants, opening small shops, etc., in the countries of arrival, where sometimes uh, people help uh, them to survive. Economic remittances are not one-way flows. This is very important and we have to be very carefully checking what happens with the migration uh, cry, uh, dynamics, dynamics in the corona context because when the financial crisis 2007-2008, the flow of remittances between the USA and Mexico uh, to a certain extent reversed. People lost their jobs in the United States Mexicans who worked in the United States lost their jobs due to the financial and economic crisis and were not able to send money, remittances to Mexico, to their households or families in Mexico. But the other way around, Mexican families supported their migrants in the US in order to survive for a certain moment of time, uh, let's say half a year. So they sent money from Mexico to the United States in order uh, not, uh, to, uh, not to um, force their uh, relatives to go back to Mexico because many of them live in an irregular way in the United States. There are estimates of about 10 million irregular migrants uh, living in the United States, mainly Mexicans, but we have similar uh, um, numbers or relations or proportions in Europe as well. So we always have some irregular migrants and uh, economic remittances flows could be redirected in cases of economic crisis like in 2007 and we should be very careful to look uh, how this will develop in the next coming years. A second aspect of uh, impacts of international migration are political impacts. Political impacts as uh, the influencing the political culture and the power relations caused by international migration flows, not only in the country of origin, but also in the country of arrival. I did studies on Mexican migrants in the United States and in Mexico and the impact both in both sides in political terms. For instance, and we did a similar research in Europe uh, for transnational migrant uh, organizations uh, where we saw that, for instance, uh, migrants coming back from the United States or from Germany or from France to their countries of origin, begin to engage in local civic participation in a different way than they did before. Because they now learned to, uh, to organize, to make claims, to perhaps build non-governmental organizations to uh, participate in social movements and they apply this, what they learned in the countries of arrival, in their countries of origin. 
But at the same time, we also have the political impact of migrant uh, organizations, for instance, in the countries of arrival, where they organize to make claims in the sense of uh, their international migration uh, interests being uh, accepted and represented in political uh, uh, aspects, etc. A third level where we have these influences of international migration in both sides is cultural impacts. Think of, think of the impact of international migration on collective belongings and knowledge. This could be the religious orientation, it could be arts, it could be public discourses, the use of languages, hybrid languages, or the use of artifacts. Just to give an example of religious orientation, the international migration between Mexico and Latin America and the United States of America uh, influenced a lot on making much more diverse uh, the religious landscape in the United States by the high inflow of Catholic believers from Mexico and other Latin American countries as mainly characterized by Catholics in former times. And the other way around, it increased the influence of Protestant groups in Latin American countries, also especially in Mexico, where Protestant groups now are very strong based and due to international migration flows. So we have a cultural impact on both sides and not only as remittances, but as transmittances. And finally, to mention uh, the social dimension of these influences of international migration, the impact of this on beliefs, norms, values, habits, and social networking. For instance, what we know by many uh, scientific research is gender roles, life projects, the relevance structures, for instance, to look for salaried work or to look for a self-employment work. All these norms, values, habits could change with migration. People, international migrants returning after a certain period of time having worked outside, abroad, come back to their countries of origin and they open their own business applying what they had learned as knowledge in their stay abroad. And the other way around, migrants change the gender roles, change the social habits and values in the country where they come and arrive. So we have a lot of many, many different influences at the societal level. And therefore my argument is from economic remittances, we should shift to the concept of societal transmittances. This uh, brings me to the last uh, point and argument in this context. Societal transmittances are understood as impacts of transnational mobilities and migration as multidimensional impacts, economic, political, cultural, and social, not only economic. They have multi-level effects at the household family, at the local community level, at the regional, at the national, and also at the transnational level. These transmittances are influenced by different types of actors or brokers of uh, impacts and by different values, motives, and habits. Transmittances are transformed in processes of imitating, motivating, and innovating. There's a lot of empirical study on this. They have different kinds of beneficiaries, of victims, and of uh, free riders, etc. So we have always to ask who is benefiting from what? Transmittances could lead to resource drain, to resource gain, or to resource circulation. This also is one uh, specific topic we have to deal with uh, in a specific aspect. 
in a transnationalism approach, societal transmittances are part of the increasing transnationalization of social spaces. Now, one important question is, will this be affected by, uh, by Corona or what will be the impact? And now I will come to my third point briefly and uh, speak about uh, Corona and international migration and the concept of transmittances. This is a, a, a map where we see the spread of Corona. I will not go into deeper details, but uh, this is beginning in December 2019, and this uh, each line represents the um, RNA analysis of specific coronaviruses, COVID-19 virus uh, um, analysis, because against all uh, conspiracy theories that the coronavirus was um, originated in the United States of America or uh, in another country, et cetera, et cetera. We have to, we can see and trace the spread of the coronavirus all over the world. And these are the countries in color where uh, it came from December, 2019 up to now uh, end of March, uh, 2020. And if we uh, have a closer look at the spread of uh, corona, uh, of this coronavirus, we can see how it uh, came from China uh, first to Europe and in a smaller uh, portion to the United States. And you see from where, and this is to a certain extent reflecting the migration and mobility patterns of uh, people that we saw uh, and spoke about before. So this is the way we can trace the coronavirus and it is related to the mobility of people. The very fact that it is related to the mobility of people can be uh, traced by, uh, a diff by taking uh, into account um, some aspects that I will speak about right now. Because one qu first question would be how influences international migration the spread and impact of corona. Corona spreads by respiratory uh, droplets, but also by aerosols or exhalation and contaminated surfaces, not by food or other goods or surfaces after many hours. So if uh, in China there is a, a, a part produced for the automobile industry in Germany or other European country, there is no um, uh, chance that um, the surface of this uh, auto part will um, infect uh, the, 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 those who use it. Corona spreads by direct personal contacts and artifacts contaminated shortly before. This is, I think, a crucial point we have to take into consideration. This uh, leads to the conclusion, Corona is not traveling by global value chains, but by direct social personal relations. Spatially mobile persons and translocal or transnational personal relations spread the virus. It's mainly transnationally mobile managers, expatriates, inpatriates, artists, politicians, scientists, students, and tourists who transport or transported and still are transporting the virus all over the world. But also international migrants, refugees could be uh, transmitting the virus. Now, the conditions and possibilities of nutrition, of hygiene, and of prevention vary substantially all over the world. We know this quite well. This makes uh, certain regions and social groups more vulnerable than others. So this is, for me, a crucial aspect of social sciences and of sociology to deal with corona. How is corona affecting, affected by social inequality, by social classes, by uh, uh, wealth uh, or poor countries uh, and conditions, etc. So we have to accept that corona could hit everybody, but it does not affect everybody in the same way. Now, if we uh, ask in a closer look, 
how Corona um, influences uh, international migration and transmittances, as we uh, commented before, we could say the classic remittances, economic remitt remittances, will be affected crucially by Corona. We don't know exactly how and the extent, the volume, but we have to take into consideration that at this moment we have some 200 million migrant workers that help to sustain the, the, their families around the world that uh, represent uh, some 1 billion persons all over the world. So uh, as the UN Secretary General uh, Guterres uh, marked it, economic remittances are a lifeline in developing uh, countries in the mainly the countries of the South. And there was dramatic reduction in remittances after the economic crisis 2007 and also in the bubble uh, crisis um, of 2001 in the sense of job losses, of health problems and of mobility restrictions that will affect the poorer countries and poorer social classes uh, in a substantial way, much more than we experienced until today in Europe. Although countries like Italy or Spain were affected in a very strong way until now. So Corona will lead to more migration and especially to migration of vulnerable groups. I think this is very, uh, very clear that we will have to study in a closer way how this will go on uh, in the future. So I already mentioned Corona could, could hit anybody all over the world, but the probability of being infected, the resources of virus detection and the protection possibilities, as well as the health infrastructure vary substantially between countries. We saw this until now, even between the European countries, but it was, is much uh, more accentuated taking uh, countries of the South. So between countries, between social classes and specific social groups, there are very different varying impacts of the coronavirus. Uh, virus. And we have, uh, think only on uh, uh, the almost 70,000, uh, sorry, 70 million forcibly displaced persons all over the world. They are highly concentrated often in camps. They are uh, concentrated like in uh, the uh, refugee camps in Greece, but also in Africa and other countries. Um, uh, so there will be much less possibilities to protect oneself against coronavirus than in um, other places. Irregular migrants, I mentioned the 10 million in the United States of America, but we have in Europe also, we have uh, hundreds of thousands of irregular migrants. They are normally without health assistance. So this is also a crucial topic. Take only Germany, we have some 40,000 persons in reception centers uh, uh, in entering Germany as refugees and some 200,000 people as asylum seekers in shared accommodations where the conditions of hygiene are much more difficult. In contrast to the degree of actual globalization and transnationalization, until now, Corona led to more national and nationalistic reactions and answers. This is our impression, I think, our reading as scientists until now. Border closings, even in the European Union, for commuting workers between France and Germany or Germany and Poland. Truck drivers are hit uh, very severely by, by these border closings as well tourists and the tourism industry. Acquaintances, we have a drastic restriction of human and citizen rights of mobility all over 
the world. The closing of borders, especially to refugees and asylum seekers, is obvious uh, where many countries take corona as a pretext uh, and excuse yet just to sharpen their uh, remedies against refugee and asylum seekers. We have a mutual, mutual holding others responsible and blaming by political leaders. Uh, Donald Trump is blaming China, China is blaming uh, the United States, etc., etc. And uh, we have an increasing suspicions and hostile attitudes normally against vulnerable groups, especially migrants. This leads me to the, my last slide, how influences corona international migration and uh, transmittances. The corona crisis could feel marginalization of migrants and challenge their integration in the countries of arrival. We have a general tendency towards a renationalization of thinking of politics, of fears and prejudices against foreigners. Some migrant groups are not integrated in the public communication flows on Corona. Think of those who are not reading all, in, uh, all uh, newspapers uh, and uh, uh, journals in, in German, for instance, or in the language of the countries of arrival, but are more, uh, more or less uh, engaged in their bubbles of uh, the countries uh, and communication flows of the countries of their origin. Economic impacts of corona crisis will induce new migration movements. We could already, we could foresee that many groups due to the lack of money, due to the lack of income uh, caused by corona uh, impacts, they will be feeling that they are forced to migrate. Corona could be a pretext and an excuse for more exclusive and restrictive migration policies. Uh, for instance, low-skilled migrants only are admitted for seasonal harvesting and is a, uh, in isolated gated uh, communities like uh, this was the case in Germany where on the one hand side we are restrictive against refugees, but on the other hand, we allow uh, the, the uh, immigration of 30 to 40,000 seasonal workers from Eastern Europe due to the uh, harvesting needs, but uh, the social needs of refugees are not weighted in the same way. At the same time, we have a competition for high-skilled migrants like physicians and care workers uh, in the context of the corona crisis that could uh, be, be uh, unbalanced uh, in, the, in its impacts on migration. And finally, uh, there's an aspect, uh, an interesting aspect, that we have a certain uh, tendency reappreciating re the so-called system-relevant groups like care workers, medical personnel, garbage collectors, etc., all these uh, sectors that were uh, neglected almost in public discourse for a long time and now are estimated because they are uh, considered as system relevant to maintain societies uh, working and living. Uh, but, and we have a high share of migrants in all these uh, precarious or uh, system relevant sectors. We have a bonus payment in Germany for care workers and public banners like uh, thank you in hospitals. But the question is how long and how sustainable will this new recognition uh, actually be? And finally, my last question for uh, this lecture, will an egoistic nationalist climate reign migration poli politics in the future as a consequence of Corona? Or will there be an approach of global responsibility and the need of sustainable development for all? These are crucial questions that we will deal with in the course of our lecture series and in the master course that is accompanying this. I thank you very much for your attention and wish you a, a nice week and say until next week, same time, same place with a new lecture. Thank you very much.